To you I call, for you will surely heed me, O God. Turn your ear to me, hear my words. Guard me as the apple of your eye. In the shadow of your wings, protect me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Would you please sit for a moment? Um, now, I wouldn't normally do this at the start of the service, but I want to uh, nip in the bud uh, some rumours that have been bouncing around about an incident that happened last week here in church, where sadly a very desperate gentleman came in uh, and attempted to steal uh, some handbags and a rucksack. Uh, he didn't get away with it. He was spotted and he was stopped and the items were returned. There were no fisticuffs, there was no violence, but it has reminded us that we need to be vigilant. Um, we need to be vigilant because when people are desperate, they do desperate things. And so not vigilant in a way that sends people packing but vigilant in a way to see how we can love people and how we can help them. One way we can do that is by removing temptation from their path. And so what I suggest you do is when you come up for communion, please do bring your handbags with you or uh, you know, just, just keep an eye on them or, or leave somebody there. We've taken some additional steps to, to make sure that, uh, that people will be discouraged from doing that again. But we offer our Mass today particularly for those who are driven in desperation to turn to thievery, to turn to taking things from other people. And we pray that their lives are healed in such a way that they do not have to turn to that path. I'm sorry to start on that note this week, but we just want to nip those things in the bud so that we can be joyful and raise our hearts to God in love. And in doing so, pray for those most in need. So brothers and sisters, please stand. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our own sins and transgressions. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Kyrie, Kyrie. To call sinners. Grace day, grace day, eleison. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And so with joy in our heart, let us worship God as we sing together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Glory to God in the highest 
and on earth peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please sit. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has been pleased to crush his servant with suffering. If he offers his life in atonement, he shall see his heirs, he shall have a long life, and through him what the Lord wishes will be done. His soul's anguish over, he shall see the light and be content. By his sufferings shall my servant justify many taking their faults on himself. The word of the Lord. The response in the psalm, May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. The word of the Lord is faithful, and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right, and fills the earth with his love. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. Our soul is waiting for the Lord, the Lord is our help and our shield. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. second reading is from the book, the letter of Hebrews. Since Jesus, the Son of God, we have supreme higher priest who has gone through to the highest heaven. We have never let go to the faith that we have prophesied. For it is not as we, ha we had a higher priest who was incapable of feeding our wickedness with us, but we have one 
who have been tempted in every way that we are. Though he is without sin, let us be confident then in approaching the dawn of grace that we shall have mercy for him and find grace we have we are all in need of help the word of the Lord reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. James and... Oh, yes. No, I forgot. Thank you, David. <laughs> Thank you. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, approached to Jesus. Master, they said to him, we want you to do us a favor. He said to them, what is it you want me to do for you? They said to him, Allow us to sit one at your right hand and the other at your left in glory. You do not know what you are asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup that I must drink, or be baptized with the baptism with which I must be baptized? They replied, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I must drink, you shall drink. And with the baptism with which I must be baptized, you shall be baptized. But as for seats at my right hand or my left, these are not mine to grant. They belong to those whom they have been allotted. When the other ten heard this, they began to feel most indignant with James and John. So Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that among the pagans their so-called rulers lord it over them, and their great men make their authority felt. This is not to happen among you. No, anyone who wants to become great among you must be your servant, and anyone who wants to be first among you must be slave to all. For the Son of Man himself did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit. You know, in my, in my career, before I was a priest, I was often described as an entrepreneur. In fact, that was in the, that was in the job description that you guys wrote for the priest that you wanted here. You wanted an entrepreneurial priest. At one point in my Twitter profile, I quite proudly had written, Chancer, Charmer, an occasional raconteur. Always looking for the main chance. Always looking for that opportunity to step up the ladder. Always looking for that opportunity to lift myself higher up in the esteem of my friends. Always looking for that opportunity to make some more money. To advance myself. So I feel for James and John. Because I recognize them. I recognize them in myself, always on the lookout for that chance, for that opportunity. And and this reaches back to a few weeks ago when I was preaching about how difficult it is for rich people, people who have been successful, who have gathered the armor of life and success around them, to enter the kingdom of heaven, to understand Jesus' teaching, because to understand Jesus we have to strip ourselves of it. And that's really hard. Now James and John are the disciples um, who were probably the wealthiest among the disciples. In fact, they could afford to pay for servants. So James and John weren't poor men of the land, but were men who already understood what it was to have money and to be served upon. And so when they started following Jesus, they brought into that life of following Jesus that previous life of looking for the main chance, looking for the opportunity to get in with a boss, looking for the chance to advance your career. Now in Matthew, we have the same story of the interaction, uh, but it's James and John's mother who says to Jesus, put my sons on your left and right hand. And again, my mother, (laughs) much the same, was pushing me to the forefront, saying, go on, because it's a a natural thing. It's how we succeed in this world. But Jesus turns to James and John and says, do you not understand what it is that I am called to do? Do you not understand? Even after all this time that we have spent together, do you not see the path that is in front of me? Can you drink the cup? that I have been given. Well, let's look at that first. Can you drink the cup that I have been given? In Jesus' time, uh, the cup was given by the leader, by the whoever was the most important person at a dinner, and it was given to the favored person, and that was a sign that this person would then follow in the steps of the leader. Can you take the cup that I am being given? The second thing, can you be baptized in my baptism? Jesus isn't talking about actual baptism. It's, it's not the baptism of the Holy Spirit and of water. It's a baptism. It's being, it's being submerged in the calling, the job that God has given me. Can you take the job that God my Father has given me to do? Can you submerge yourself in the thing that God my Father has called me to do? And what is that thing? It is to die on the cross. Can you take these things, James and John? Of course, they reply, yes, of course we can. We can take these things because as ever, they're not hearing what Jesus is saying. It's the same question we have to ask ourselves in our life. When we follow Jesus, what is it that we have to set aside in order to to follow him. Can we submerge ourselves in the calling that God has given us? Can we take the cup from God our Father for the job that he has given us? Not because it will advance things for us. Not because we'll look good if we do it. Not because even it'll make you feel happy. Because those things that we are given by God sometimes aren't about us being happy. They're not even about other people being happy. It's part of a broader plan of God's that we don't necessarily understand. We are asked to shed 
all of those earthly things and to understand what God is calling us to. But the cup that we are given by God. One way to think of that is the gifts that we are given by God and how we use them. The cup that is given to us in God, those gifts, how do we use them? Chancer, raconteur, entrepreneur. Instead of using those gifts, instead of using that cup that God has given me to advance my career, to amass more money, I use those gifts to call people to Jesus Christ. And each and every one of you will be given a gift by God to call people to his son or to follow him. It can be the work of a life to figure out what that gift may be, but that is what you're called to do. And you're called to do it knowing that it may not be something that you necessarily want to do. You may be called to do it even if it is uncomfortable and hard. You may have to set aside a lifetime of learning, of, of gathering of uh, criteria of how you operate in the world and cast it aside. But don't lose that gift that God has given you, whatever that is. Now it could be that your gift from God is the ability to open someone's heart. I'll give you an example. It's Val. Who on my 41st birthday bought me a mug. Two mugs in fact. One for me and one for Catherine with a little cat on it. And it's beautiful. And in that small gift, Val opened my heart to love. And I felt valued and I felt understood and that made me, I, I was lifted higher towards the love of God in that moment. Val always seems to know when I need a bar of chocolate to lift me up as well. It could be that you are called to be a lay minister in the church. And indeed in the new year we will be commissioning Susan as a lay minister here in St. Anselm. She will be leading morning prayer and evening prayer and taking on a more formal role in the life and work of of the church. And to see Susan flourish in that calling, to see her lifted up towards God, lifts me up as well, and it should lift you up. Is your gift an ability to write? Is it an ability to communicate what it is that we do in this church for God? Could you write something for the front page of our pew sheet? Is your gift an ability to sit in this church as Cynthia and Shirley and Trevor have done this week so that it is open so that people can come and know Jesus in this place? Is your gift going to boring, <laughs> I shouldn't say boring, but diocesan meetings like Jeremy does, to learn how the church operates and our place within it so that we can get the funds to do the things that we want to do. Is your gift singing? Like Gavin and Edmund who came to the children's workshop yesterday, music workshop, and sang so beautifully for us. To hear their voices lifts our hearts. Is your calling to hold someone's hand and say, you know what, it's going to be all right? Is your calling to love your wife or your husband? Is your calling to care for your children? Is your calling to hand out rosaries on the streets of Hayes? Is your calling to help children understand the love of God. Not because those jobs or those tasks will give you grandeur, not because they will lift you up, not because they will give you any sort of authority, 
but because in doing them you are serving Jesus Christ, walking with him on his way to the cross, carrying with you the sufferings that he has given you so that you may suffer with him. So this week, my plea, my ask, my desperate call to you is to examine what gifts God has given you, to identify how those gifts can be used to call other people to Jesus Christ, to come and speak to me about your place in the world and how you may serve God more fully. Pray on that this week. Open your heart to it. There's a terrific opportunity tomorrow. St. Luke, the evangelist, who had gifts as a physician, who had gifts as someone who could write, who had gifts as an artist, and he deployed those to call people to Jesus Christ. Come to evening prayer tomorrow and pray for that. If you can come to Mass tomorrow morning, come to Mass tomorrow morning and pray on those things. If you can't come, watch online on the webcam. All of us are given a gift. All of us must use that gift to bring people to Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us now stand and make our profession of faith, which you'll find inside the pew sheet, and it's just there, inside your pew sheet. Profession of faith just after the readings on that first page. We say together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our help comes from the Lord. Let us pray to him now. We pray for those who teach prayer and open the scriptures to others at schools and colleges, retreat houses and conferences, and in churches and homes all over the world. We pray that many will find in scripture words speaking into their situation and providing the guidance they need. Lord, in your mercy, At this time, we remember the people of Aberfan in South Wales, where on the 21st of October 1966, 55 years ago, the village school was engulfed in a landslide, killing 116 children and 28 adults. We pray for them and for those who remain. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those picking their way through situations of potential conflict and danger, for lawmakers and keepers, and all who are oppressed unjustly, for the leaders of the nations and their people. Lord, in your mercy. 
and we pray for the grace to listen to one another and to respond to one another's needs. We pray for a spirit of cooperation and generosity in our homes and neighbourhoods. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are wrestling with problems which seem too big to cope with. For those who have recently received news that has stunned or appalled them and are still in shock. We pray for those who have asked us to pray for them. For Yolanda de Gale and Sister Angela, for Helen Holman and Beryl Hicks, for Norma Piggott, Renee Holman, June Borton, Verity Thompson, Daniel Sibley, Wayne Campbell, Ivor, Maxine and Megan, Gary Savile, Anthony and Greta, David Millard, Caroline, Debbie Potts, H and her family, and for Hugh and Val Jones. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who have gone through death, that they may be judged with mercy and brought safely into the eternal life of heaven. Praying for those who died this night without access to priest or sacrament. For those who have died around the world proclaiming your holy name. For those torn from the womb. And for those whose anniversary of death falls this week. For Horace Charles Nash, Edward Brennan, Betty Maud Harper, John Redding, Harold Edward Henry Bonnet, John Lucas, Derek Carson, Ethel Belcher, Ronald Edgehill, Denzel Upshan, Edward Brown, Harry Barnard, and Albert White. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. Encouraged by Mary's prayerful example, we join our praise and turn to her as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We pray in silence for our own petitions to God our Father, who knows all our needs. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink.
sins and wash away my iniquities. Amen. Gracious Lord, we give thanks for the gifts of your people, for the offerings that they have brought to this altar, for the gifts of love and of joy, for the gifts of hope, for those gifts that they deploy to bring people closer to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. We give thanks for the gifts of money through the parish giving scheme and for those who have offered these gifts of money today. Bless all of these offerings to your use. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through who Christ our Lord, for in the marvellous confession of your saints, you make the church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage, their fervent prayer sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by our Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Justin, our Archbishop, Jonathan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you, brothers and sisters. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who comes to take away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ give me safe in eternal life. Amen. May the blood of Christ give me safe in eternal life. Amen. Dear friends watching online across the world, now is the time to make your spiritual communion, to turn to Jesus Christ, to ask him to enter your hearts, to nourish you, that you may be sent out into the world in his name. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, who hope in his merciful love to rescue their souls from death and keep them alive in famine.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit, because we now have a communion an uh, anthem which is going to be sung for us. Please sit. The communion anthem is going to be sung for us by the children's choir as they, uh, they practiced for yesterday. I have suggested to Anthony that we install a fireman's pole so he can just come down from the organ off straight to the piano, but he wasn't keen. Thank you, Anthony. Maybe you have to be close to the microphone. You can just, no, no, just stand back there. That's it. Just see normally, okay? <laughs>
guys. Go sit back down. Well, what about that? What about gifts given and gifts offered? Is there a dry house, a dry eye in church? <laughs> right. Well done, boys. You were absolutely brilliant. Both the boys came yesterday to the children's, um, children's choir workshop. And uh, they were the only two there. But my gosh, they made up for being the only two there. They worked really, really hard. And they, you worked on how you stood, didn't you? And we worked on how we projected our voices. And we learned a new game called Gas Taps, which I suspect is going to be all around the schoolyard. So if you walk past uh, Dr. Triplets and you hear an entire schoolyard of children going, they're practicing how to sing. Well done, well done, absolutely brilliant. And I also want to say well done to Sienna. Where's Sienna? Has Sienna gone to the loo? Oh no, Sienna, who's in there? <laughs> who the first time serving today and she was learning how to serve and the servers, the serving team, isn't it lovely to have them back this Sunday? The serving team were teaching Sienna how to serve. So when you see her, tea and coffee after mass, when you see little Sienna, make sure you encourage her and tell her what a great job she did. And if we clap, maybe she'll hear us. <laughs> um, so let's uh, go through the rest of the notices. Uh, I, I will make a, a plea again. It's the Rosary Mission continues this week, and um, I don't have anyone signed up to help me keep the church open next week at all. Um, and that makes it very difficult for me to go out to bring people in if there's no one here to look after the church. So please do uh, have a look at the sign-up sheet at the back of church, and do consider please just signing up for an hour or two to help keep the church open. You will also see... Um, a big pile of posters and leaflets at the back with all of our next events on. Please take them uh, and pop them up in your windows or pop them up on notice boards. Take them to your local supermarket and put them up because if they don't go up, people don't know what's happening. And there's only so many places I can get myself and so I'm really relying on you to spread the news of the work that we're doing in this church. Please take these posters and flyers home with you and share what's going on. The next event is the bric-a-brac sale on the 30th of October. Um, our last rehearsal for the adult choir is this afternoon between two and four. It's our last rehearsal before the adult choir sings together at mass next week. So the adult choir will be singing together at mass next week. Don't worry if you've not been to a rehearsal before. Come along today, two till four o'clock, and you'll pick up everything you need to know for next week. And do make a special effort to come next week to hear the very first concert by our, well, not concert, but the very first uh, anthem sung by the adult choir. Everything else is on that sheet. Um, this week, services are completely as normal, morning prayer and evening prayer every day. Um, as I mentioned in my sermon, we'll be commissioning Susan as a lay minister here in the new year. And as part of that starting to happen and recognizing God's call in Susan, she will be leading evening prayer this week uh, when, when I can't do it. And because of her gift, we're able to have evening prayer when we would otherwise have to cancel it. So uh, I'm very grateful to Susan and everybody who steps up to make sure that we can do these things. Yes. And if that is something that you feel in your life you would like to do, a more formal role in church, whether or not it's leading morning prayer, evening prayer, or reading, or doing prayers, whatever it is, come and speak to me. Um, on, uh, da, 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 what day is it happening? I'm sure I put, ah, yes, I did, Wednesday. The Society for the Protection of the Unborn Child are meeting here in the church hall at 7 o'clock. So there are some leaflets about that and exactly who they are and what they do at the back of church. They do terrifically important work with government, uh, protecting mothers and children. Uh, now, I think that's all the notices. 
one final thing. I'm so happy to have David back. I would have forgotten all sorts if it wasn't for him today, whispering in my ear, going, Father. So isn't it lovely to have David back, praying for us at, uh, praying for us at our mother church, but he's back where he belongs. Is that it? Then please stand and receive God's blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down on you today and remain with you always. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his passion and cross, may we be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.